you have to understand something about how the system works. It's a self-revealing system, this, this system that we live in. Uh, it's, it's constantly showing you. It's constantly showing you whether that was the way it was designed or not. It's constantly trying to show you what it's doing. Uh, some might call it coincidence. Some might say, well, this is being done on purpose. They planned it. But it's a self-revealing system. But the fact of the matter is, is you know, in the, in, in the simplest terms, and believe me, when they finally drop all of this on top of you, they're, go they're going to tell you, you know, when people scream out, well, we didn't know, we didn't know, how could you have tricked us, how could you lie to us through the religions? They're going to tell you, you know, for the last 50 or 60 years, at least, through, the, through electronics and through everything else, we tried to show you. We showed you in movies. We, we showed you in songs. We showed you in things that were subversive, and we showed you in things that were not so subversive. But you didn't pay attention. See, you didn't pay attention. All of the movies, all of the songs, they all have meanings, but you never stopped to think. What are these meanings? What are they talking about? You never investigated. And see, they know that, and so it just perpetuates. It's a perpetual emotion that they know that people don't care. And you know what? It goes to the point and the fact that people don't care, even to the point that even if they know they're being lied to, as long as they're getting their paycheck, they're happy with that. See, and they learned this a long, long, long time ago. And see, and so when the day does come, uh, the, I don't mean the day of reckoning standing before the Lord. I'm talking about their day of reckoning when they're going to drop drop all the crap on you and open it up and say, here, ta-da, here's your reward. Uh, they're going to tell you, we tried to tell you. We were fair because you know what? That, that organization, that side of whatever you want to call it, still has rules it has to play by and it has to give you the opportunity to see what it's doing see this is why you always see in the movies the devil has to sign a contract because even the bad guys have rules and you know there's no excuse for you just to have said well I didn't know nobody told me they they have been telling you and I'm not a spokesman for them I'm just telling you that you are your biggest enemy you closed your eyes they tried to tell you. They've been trying to tell you. They're telling you now through all the videos you're watching, mine and others, that they are out to fucking kill you. Don't you get it? When will you learn? They are out to kill you. They've been doing it for years. And they're telling you they're doing it. They're telling you in song, in movies. But no, we got to go. We got to watch Star Wars. We got to do Harry Potter. Don't go to the next Harry Potter movie because you're going to see that shit for real, real soon. Excuse my language, but I, you know, I'm so tired of people walking around blind. I'm no smarter than you are. I'm probably dumber. But at least I understand what they're trying to tell me. That, hey, we're running the show here. I understand that Jesus said, I am not the ruler of this world. That Satan is. But you don't see it. See, you don't see it because you don't want to see it. Okay? Wake up. Look at the signs around you, and I don't mean the big ones. Look for the small ones, because the small ones are the ones that are the, are the most telling. You don't get it, do you? You haven't woken up. And by the time that you do, and you still have time, it might not be too late. And you know what? They won't be held accountable in front of God, because the, the ones that are doing this to you will not be held accountable, because you were given a fair opportunity which is your entire life babies and that stuff that's totally separate but you adults and young adults and old adults you've had your entire life to look around and see where the signs are and you have chosen you have chosen to accept evil you have chosen to accept stupidity you have chosen to accept it's not my problem I don't care and now that is going to be the reward that will be heaped on you when they finally close the door because you will be stupid they won't care and it's not their problem start looking at the signs and I don't mean the shit on the news and I don't mean the crap that you hear in scuttlebutt do some research it's right in front of your face stop screwing around 
It's right there. It's been there the whole time, your whole life. Music is one of the strongest forces. How many times have you sang songs and you don't even know what the fuck it means? But you still sing it. You know, you go to church and you pray to a God with a certain name and you don't even know who he is. You know, you defend a country called Israel and you don't even know who Israel is. Not that they're the problem, but I'm just saying, you have had your whole life. You know what, and this is me too. I'm not exempt from this. I didn't start out as some guy that knew it all. You know, I started out as some young kid. I was 12 years old. I remember Jesus saying something and it caught my interest and, you know, um, and I went from there. But the bottom line is I started out as a Lutheran. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it wasn't until after 9-11 or slightly before that where I really got involved. But I started to notice things. And, 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 and things went on and on and on. They are giving you the opportunity. Remember Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? You remember Slugsworth? You remember he was the, he was the bad guy? Okay? He's the one that came along and said, hey... Here, don't give that ever stopping or everlasting gobstopper back to Willy Wonka. Screw him, give it to me, and I'll pay you. It's kind of the same thing. Except they are they are in your face, they are showing you what their intention is. But for some reason, people don't care. You know, when you're young, you think you're gonna live forever. You know, I've always said, eh, when you're in your twenties, you think you're invincible and you're gonna live forever. When you get into your thirties, you still think you're invincible, but you don't think you'll live forever. When you get into your 40s, you know you're not going to live forever, and you know you're not invisible. And when you get into your 50s, you know you're not going to live forever, and you just forget it. I don't even want to get involved. You know what I mean? Um, they're telling you. They're telling you to look around. They're telling you on the smallest infinitesimal level to look around and see who's pulling the strings. Jesus said it in one sentence. I am not the ruler of this world. That only leaves one other guy, but you just say, well, whatever. It doesn't matter to me who's pulling the strings, but it will. Because not only are you going to be judged individually, mankind is being judged right now. That's why those things are able to come upon the people. Because we let them in here. We, me, and you. No matter whether you call yourself a Christian or whatever, you've done it and I've done it. We invited those things in. There was a point in history, long, long time ago, when we that this could have been stopped. I don't throw that out upon your head, but th this is a perpetual energy that's been forced and it's going right through, and guess what? There's no stopping it. Wake up, look up, and start talking to the Father and start talking to Jesus, because you know what? That's your only way out of here. It's our only way out of here. Mine, yours, and everybody else. Okay, start looking around. The signs are bigger than ever. If you can't read them now, then you truly are lost.
why do the people think they know things and talk about how others don't know anything? Why is it so easy to get people to call other people sheep? Is that not just the new underground pop thing to say? You have homophobia, this could be sheepophobia. Everybody calls everybody else a sheep. They talk about how they're awake. People believe that if they watch a six-hour video by David Icke, or watch Endgame by Alex Jones, or study the Illuminati online, they believe that after doing so, that that has anything, in any way, to do with being awake. They believe it. I'm not kidding. They can't get enough. Addicted to posting their opinion in a forum. Chasing that white rabbit everywhere it goes. And they call themselves awake because the system wants you to call yourself awake. It loves that cockiness, arrogance, and hating other people. And as you're sucked into this, it is consuming you and you don't know it. You don't even realize it. You just prefer to be able to call people sheep. Perhaps subconsciously you resent that you were called a sheep. You want to be able to say it too. The naivety with that is that you don't know anything that they know. And they know you don't know it. You're not hurting their feelings. You're making them laugh at you. Because you're eating up mostly propaganda that they have distributed. Calling yourself awake and pointing your finger at them. And you are hardly enabled to deal with them or even your own self. John, tell me why. John, give me, give me, give me. John, tell me another answer, please. And can you answer this question for me? And what's your opinion on that? You owe me a response. I owe you a response? How much am I getting paid to do this? Oh, that's right. Nothing. I couldn't even count the number of people that have declared being awake to me. Couldn't do it. People are very easily controlled. All they have to do is create a new subcategory of personalities. Right now you have the jocks, you have the rednecks, you have the goth, you have the preppies, you have the business people and the whatever. Now they have the awake people. The reason nobody knows anything can only be explained to you by a metaphor, of course. In this realm you can only use metaphor. Think of the difference between a broadband connection and a 56K connection. Now, there are people that know what is occurring in this reality. Many of them joined secret societies. So it's not that they have knowledge, it's just that they have acquired information. They went in reverse. You see, true knowledge is true knowledge. Those with understanding understand what I just said. Those without, don't. It's pre-symbol. A symbol is no different than any expression, a song, a picture, a sound, a look, a touch. A symbol should be the result of knowledge. The understanding, the awareness, and then you have the symbol surface. Having somebody learn symbols and then distributing a very strategically limited amount of meaning to that person does not give them knowledge. They perceive that they're getting knowledge. For example, I could say the word gum to some bubblegum popping dizzy minded cheerleader and the only meaning that she may come up with when she hears that word is chewing gum. I could say the same word gum to somebody else and they may think chewing gum but they could also think a gum tree or the gums around your teeth. Could say it to another person, they'll think chewing gum, a gum tree, gums around your teeth, but maybe they're thinking even deeper, maybe they have a deeper understanding. Metaphorical comparison to other things. 
gummy substances used in construction. Maybe molecular assessment. I only used one word, a phonetic symbol, written if you're looking at it. The meaning transferred by using that symbol is directly dependent upon who is receiving the information. If it's the cheerleader, she's only going to get a very limited amount of understanding, just enough to communicate. The line by Gene Hackman in the first Superman, some people can extract the secrets of the universe just by looking at the ingredients on a chewing gum wrapper, is absolutely correct. What that means is you can get a lot of information just by being aware. The creases in the paper, the spacing between the letters, the letters themselves, the space around the letters, all the nuances. Now, unfortunately, I have to say that this is a metaphor, okay? A metaphor. That does not mean that you should go and try to learn as many meanings as you can for each word that you know. That would have nothing to do with anything. That was just a metaphor that I used. If you think of a symbol, and you look at maybe the shape of the number six, you can be told what that means. But perhaps if you're bathing in knowledge and awareness and life, suddenly you have an understanding and then a symbol like six comes up. Maybe you think of getting caught in a tumor and you come in but you can't get out and you're caught in a vortex, a circular cyclic existence, getting in, not getting out. Something like that, you know. What they do to you early is they show you all the symbols and tell you what they mean. And they don't tell you completely what they mean, of course. They tell you what they want you to think they mean. Why? Because what is the true purpose of being? If you're not extracting meaning from your path, from your experience, deriving meaning from it, in creating expression, the expression would always be the symbolic. A picture, a touch, a kiss, anything, an image, right? If you're only copying what they've told you things mean and replicating what they've told you to use them for and how to use them, how to speak, how to think, what means what, what you're supposed to do, what the meaning of your life is. If you allow yourself to be told what the meaning of your life is by something in your objective reality, somebody else, what is your purpose other than to be a slave? Forget about laws and politics, that's all bull. That's only a result. If you're not creating and the only way you're going to create is by extracting meaning from within. If you can't do that, what is the point of you being around other than to be a slave? Acquiring detail. This means this. I learned what this symbol means. This pagan symbol means this. What do you mean you learned? Did you look it up? Were you told or did you read what it means? Or did you sit there by a lake and think about life as a whole and what's happening and the symbol came up and you're like, oh my gosh. See, the oh my gosh is when you extract meaning. It doesn't have to be a traumatic thing like, oh my gosh. It can be, oh my God. <sighs> that is the sign of a creative. Somebody that's always in their mind like, I get it, oh my gosh. And you want to tell the whole world because you've just created, you've extracted meaning from within. Those that even if they have opened up, all right, and they were seeking information, because information is not knowledge. So enlightenment would be in the category of information. Why? Because as it's sold, as it ends up being, all you're doing is changing your perception of reality. Just seeing other templates of symbolic expression. There are no answers there if you're depending upon anything you experience to give you those answers. So in truth, if you have the meaning inside and you 
come up with symbols and you see them in your objective reality, maybe somebody else came up with it too, you have an understanding, an immediate understanding. Sometimes that can be faked or replicated. Somebody's been indoctrinated into a system where they had to learn specific meanings to symbols. And so one who is in the know, one who has knowledge may run into somebody like that and the person may have learned enough so that you have an understanding but the person that learned it will still look at you if you came from within to know in a way that, that they're curious how do you know because you seem to have a different uh, a fuller understanding of it a non-polarized understanding of it they learn a few specific ways to talk about it and what it means, but you can talk about it endlessly with different metaphors. What's the difference? Well, what's the difference between reading a book and memorizing somebody else's conclusions and extracting meaning and coming to your own? It's like the difference between a muffin top and a muffin. They've got you all eating up muffin tops but you don't have the knowledge underneath. Is that a permanent thing? Absolutely not. The reason you don't know anything is because many people that do have knowledge, even if they wanted to tell you, it's like they are on a broadband connection and you're on 56K. There is so much information. And unfortunately, as it is right now, the general population has no idea they look at a symbol maybe they're taught a symbol either they really don't have any understanding of it or it's a very limited understanding if you have knowledge inside of you you could sit there and talk about that one symbol all day there's more than one meaning attached to symbols like I told you a deer in the woods can mean more than one thing by stomping their hoof if you seek the symbol the muffin top you will never have the whole muffin and this is what people do when they try to seek videos and books and all they're looking for muffin tops they're looking for the end result therefore you are dependent upon the meaning that is given to you so somebody in the know if they're talking to somebody that isn't in the know can be very difficult why well a very naive thing to say or if somebody's trying to manipulate you, control your mind, they'll say this, the truth is an easy thing to say. And anybody who speaks for a long time to you, they're trying to manipulate you. Now that's a very naive thing to say. Yes, somebody who depends upon a lot of words, really trying to control what you're thinking, could very well be trying to manipulate you. But if you depend upon length, of speech and that's where your perception lies you wouldn't be able to tell anyway if someone's trying to manipulate you you should pick up on that within seconds regardless of what they're saying the truth is something easy to say if one person in the know is speaking to another person in the know in other words you've both reached the same conclusions and you know it you know when other people know you just do. That's why they don't say anything other than that. You know when other people know. And you say, well, that's ambiguous. And that's ambiguous to you. But that is a symbol. To say that sentence, you know when other people know, that is a symbol. And those who have come to the conclusion on their own understand the full meaning of that those who may have heard that from some philosopher and they were told that that philosopher was brilliant so they decided to dwell upon things the philosopher said if a philosopher says to you you just know you just know when other people know well you trust that philosopher because everybody has given them a five-star rating so you think well that must mean something so I'm gonna sit around and think about it you can't sit around and think about that. That is a result of so much, so many experiences. So, if I say you just know when other people know, 
You don't have to sit around and assess and calculate in your mind and think of behavioral patterns or they said this and they said that. I'm going to put two and two together and formulate an assessment of them and what their intentions are. If you are doing that, that is robotic. It's nothing against you. If I were against you, I wouldn't be trying to help. It's the conclusion that matters. If you reach it on your own because a conclusion is a symbol it is a symbolic representation the quote the conclusion that has so much attached to it all of your experiences that tie in to the conclusion how do you extract meaning well perhaps you have an experience it could be a social experience it could be anything and that experience is finished and that means nothing to you then you have another experience and you see that it's different but there's something similar to that other experience you're kind of like hmm and then you have a third experience in your life and it's really similar now all three of them then you have a fourth experience that solidifies the similarity and prompts a question it is the fourth experience that prompted you to ask the question but it required the other three preceding it the fourth experience if it were isolated in and of itself would never have prompted it you needed all four experiences so now you have the question and maybe you have a whole other series of experiences that are happening so that you can extract meaning to address the question and maybe after all of that you come to a conclusion and now that conclusion propels you in your advancement of understanding and extracting meaning in your life and you start a whole other series of experiences and that's just one facet of your life and maybe simultaneously you have 30 other paths going like that like I just explained and maybe all 30 of them come to one peak of a conclusion and you need it all 30 paths that had many many experiences within each path leading up to minute conclusions that come together that lead you to a new understanding that takes time it takes attentiveness and the desire to have meaning to have purpose and now that one new understanding could be one of thousands that eventually tie in and you don't even know it right until you reach the <gasps> The, oh my gosh and all of these things come from within your ability to make use of pattern recognition to see how things are always and never the same what do they have in common did you get out there and experience people of different cultures were you too busy trying to project your culture onto them and see what they would say or were you trying to figure out what you had in common? I did that my whole life. In the moment of doing it, I didn't really necessarily know why I was motivated to do it. My spirit did, but my conscious mind didn't. Your spirit will lay breadcrumbs for you throughout your entire life or path. So if you come to an understanding, and then several understandings, and you know how much is involved with it you can tell other people the details of your path but that isn't their path and if they try to memorize the details of your path they're pulled off of their path this is why I have been really careful not to give too much information about my path people always ask me tell me how this all began and the details of my path are irrelevant the understanding is the important thing the conclusions I reach and I can share conclusions with you to motivate you but I can't have you memorize my conclusion so I have to have a delicate balance of rhetoric with the information and the information is not volumes of information it's enough to make my point clear it's enough to show you that I've learned but I don't want you to memorize the details of my life one who really cares for you will be attentive to that and the idea of indoctrinating somebody with an oath is absolute evil why because they're declaring they do not want you to be a creative being and extract your own meaning 
you will go through steps in which they will spoon feed you meaning and because it's more meaning than you had before more knowledge you're really impressed by it you think you're actually getting something you think that you're being empowered when they know that by keeping you from being able to extract meaning on your own they've got complete control over you they have pulled you off of your path but if they did that successfully you would never even have thought of that now would you because you won't extract your own meaning you see nevertheless somebody with a lot of knowledge if they're on a broadband connection and they're speaking to somebody in a 56k connection it's anything but easy to tell the truth like I said before one in the know can say the truth very easily to another in the know if one in the know is speaking to an individual that is not in the know saying the truth is anything but easy why because of what you know you know of the enormous gaps that they have that you cannot just say the truth because they'll understand the words with the limited understanding they have in their concept building by society but they would need to go through so much and you know that they don't believe that telling them that makes no sense to them they say the truth is simple you should be able to give me a simple answer and then what happens is the people that have knowledge get very frustrated the very moment you interrupt them or cut off what they're saying to you when they have to extend great patience to try to tell you the truth and you cut them off and want to give them your opinion or you tell them that you agree with them or disagree to somebody in the know when they're speaking to somebody that is not in the know when the person that is not in the know says that they agree or disagree both of those things are offensive because they know you should just have your mouth shut and take in what they're saying and a lot of what they're saying will be rhetoric but I talk to people like this all the time they completely ignore the rhetoric I'll use rhetoric that if they had wisdom they would understand at least okay there's something with this and they blow it off they go yeah but anyway but I, and then I blow them off and they have no idea why I blew them off or people will just bombard me with questions questions that are what you call loaded anybody in the know would say that's a loaded question because you lack you lack so much just in the fact that you're asking those questions shows how much you don't know and you ask them in a very naive way it's not your fault but you expect a simple answer people will go up to somebody with knowledge that has required an entire lifetime of attentive awareness to their experiences detailed and disciplined effort to extract meaning from your life and they ask you a simple question and expect somehow that you are going to be able to transfer a lifetime of understanding in two or three paragraphs they truly do they do expect that otherwise they wouldn't ask the question so you have this huge gap between those who are in the know and those who are not in the know those who are not in the know do not know they're not in the know because of how they have been taught to think they have been incorrectly instructed in their thinking process itself they have been taught to look outside of themselves for answers they have been misinformed about what answers are because they've spent their whole life having the meaning spoon-fed to them they think that's how it works so you ask a question and somebody can spoon feed you the answer and because you lack any meaning or an understanding you don't understand why that answer is wrong limited or even misleading you you can't based upon that based upon how you've been instructed to think so a lot of people that have knowledge 
when they interact with the average person they get very very frustrated very they'll just look at you all they can do is look at you because they can't say anything to you you would not be able to extract meaning from what they say they said gum all you would do is hear chewing gum and they're thinking 500 different meanings to gum all leading up to a point of conclusion if you lack that it's a waste of time to tell you anything this is why when you hear someone tell you that you cannot be told the truth this is why so they'll look at you and they'll have that look and those in the know understand that look it's a look that says you know so little you know absolutely nothing and don't know it to tell you what I know I would need 500 mouths and have to be able to speak 500 different sentences simultaneously all at the same time to express what I know and you would have to be able to interpret 500 simultaneous sentences flowing at you at once that's what that look says and the look also says you don't even know that and if I told you that you would call me arrogant because you've been trained to call people arrogant you don't even know what that means so they'll just sit there and shake their head at you they shake their head from side to side because they're paralyzed it's the questions you ask the way that you ask the questions and what you do if they actually try to answer them how long does it take before you cut them off roll your eyes or get distracted by something that occurs in the room like a cat being distracted by bright and shiny objects and if they're trying to tell you something and maybe your cell phone will ring and you'll tell the person trying to give you truth to hang on Shelly has to talk about her boyfriend okay hey you're not gonna get the truth you're nowhere near prepared to even comprehend anything that is true and then you say come on just tell me you can't be told well that doesn't make sense all you have to do is tell me you can't be told not in your current state you need a lot of work and you don't understand why you need a lot of work that's what it comes down to now nothing is a hundred percent am I saying that every Freemason has been spoon-fed no there's a lot of intuitive people that probably joined that but they were naive enough to be sucked in but some of these people may want to tell the world things maybe they thought you know this isn't fair I, I gotta tell them what's going on and they tried maybe they tried with a few people but they got the rolling of the eyes or the person that they knew knew nothing tried to debate them they're so far out of the know that they can't even recognize truth when it's told to them do you know that the majority of the people that look up information on the Illuminati point their fingers at people in the Illuminati if you actually sat down in a room with these people and were allowed to ask them questions and they had to be honest with you if they told you the truth you either wouldn't understand or you would roll your eyes you would laugh at them I know enough to know that a problem with somebody in an organization like that is not only are they separated from you they're separated from you because they cannot relate to you because what you think is is not what they think is that's first and foremost and that's by design by that which sucked them into it they're also controlled by an oath with fear and it's not just fear of death they'll use threats of the unknown because these people are shown different templates of reality and they say we control that too so if you do this it's not over when you die we'll get you here here and here and they don't know any difference they can't prove that that isn't happening that that won't happen that's the fear of the unknown when are you subjected to the fear of the unknown when you look outside of yourself for meaning they are answering to a consciousness 
that overwhelms them. It can speak through anyone, they know it. If they want to ask it a question, they can look in a cloud. So that can be overwhelming for them, and I understand that. My intent is not to point my finger at anybody or anything on any scale. People in these societies are sucked in, then they're blackmailed. Because even though they believe they have all of this knowledge, some of it is filtered in their mind by the consciousness that controls their minds. So they don't think about certain things. Controlling of their mind to make them deviate in a way that society would want to pick up stones and throw them at them. Because society is corrupt too, that's why they're so judgmental. These people are scared of that type of persecution. I understand that. I'm not going to point my finger at them for being scared of it. Rather, I would like to go through it in some ways myself and show them that it's worth it. And show them their own value. I want to show everybody value. I'm not polarized here. Because that's what's in my heart. If I feel like a healer, how could I look at somebody with a disease and just focus on their behavior? and be too stupid to recognize that their behavior is a result of a condition. Now if I have true wisdom, wouldn't I address the condition? I would only focus on somebody's conduct throughout their life if I had a very small mind and had no capabilities, no abilities, no talent, no gift to give, no ability to create. My desire is to heal both myself and everything I see and not carry the whole world on my shoulders when I do it but rather be moment to moment since everybody else is ignoring the problem the majority and I say wait a minute you know that person doesn't have to be that way they don't have to be corrupt and I know it because I've watched my own corruption get healed so if it can happen for me I know it can happen for somebody else I would be what you call a fool. You know, the one that comes in with the hat and the bells? I would be a fool to blind myself to the whole picture and not take everything into account. That includes my own behavior, my own path, because that's where I'm going to get any knowledge from anyway.